Hey guys, welcome to the Friday quick episode thingy that you guys suggest. So, um, today we're going to be making a uh, fighter camera, a really simple fighter camera. This was requested by Nick on Facebook, so thank you Nick, and this is what we're going to be doing today. Here is my current setup. So I've got a plier on the left here. I didn't actually uh, bother about coding those movement stuff, but you know, I can just move in the, uh, in the scene view. Um, we have two player, this one here and this one here. Now our goal with this is to have a camera that looks at both of them at the same time, always. So basically if I just put my camera in a uh, 16 per 9 have a camera that keeps looking at both at all times. So say if this guy over here is all the way there, then I don't see him anymore and we gotta be fixing that. So what we're gonna be doing is we are going to create a new script. So I'm going to add a component on top of my main camera. This is going to be the fighter camera. And I'd like to make it so it supports more than only two player, but multiple. So say we have a player number three here. Um, I'll just add that in there. So it's going to support multiple player, not just two, not just three, four, five, just a infinite amount basically. So let's open up our fighter camera. And now the first thing we need in here is to have a reference to uh, what we're actually looking at. Now, what we could do, there's multiple ways to do it. We could do a public, uh, let's do a transform array of player transform. And we could manually just assign that. So we save this, we can manually just assign that inside of the array that we made. So we have three players on the map. Oops, not 30, we have three. Sorry about that. And we just drag and drop them in here, like this. And there we go. So now we have a reference to those two player. But I don't think that's quite nice and that's quite good. That won't work with every single game. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is, if I was to make a fighter game, I'd have to go through a menu and then I spawn my fighter depending on which one I chose. So I'm actually spawning that thing. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is maybe you don't have these in the, sign, uh, in the scene, maybe you create them afterwards. So what I'll be doing instead of just making this public is uh, I'll make it private and I'll just fill it at the start. So in my private void start, so what we'll do in the start is I'll declare a, uh, oops, I'll declare a game object array that is going to be all players and I'll get them using the um, the tag so game object that find game objects with tag and I'm looking for tags player now make sure that every single one of your player does have that tag so right now this one is untagged let's put player same thing here and they're pretty much all players and just below this I'll do player transforms win s so that's my array is equal to a new transform array of length and the length is going to be all players that count or I mean all players that length and let's just do a quick for loop so for int i is equal to zero as long as i is smaller than all player dot length we do a i plus plus and inside of that and sorry about my formatting it's just model develop is being so weird nowadays for some reason um, we'll do a player transform at the index i is equal to all player at index i dot transform. So we're pretty much just transferring the game objects. Um, well, we're, we're transferring the uh, game objects, so we're getting their transform, put that in the transform array. Now, what we could have done instead is have a game object array here and not bother about this whole thing down there. I just want to keep the transform, I don't really want to have to type in. Uh, player transform at the index i dot transform so I don't really want that so we assign it down here right again this start is not needed if you have this on public it's you have to decide and um, I just make it so it, it, it is working for both cases alright so once that is completed we are going to go ahead and declare some more stuff so some more public fields this time let's do a public float y offset that I just set at 2. You might want to have a um, small offset in Y, that's why I put that here. And another one called minimum distance. That's really important. Set it at something like 10 or 7.5 in my case. And that is going to be all the public fields we need. We are going to declare 4 private float 
first one being x min, x max, y min, and y max. And if you guessed it, we are going to get the minimum um, point in x of a player and the maximum in x, same thing for the y. We're going to be doing that constantly, so we know exactly where to position our camera. So, down here, private void, late update. And I'm doing late update because we're updating a camera, and it has to be done after updating the player's position. So, in a normal frame, in normal um, Unity game frame, you want to be moving your player first, and then move your camera. Because if you move your camera first, and then you move the player, you're going to get a small glitter. You're going to get some kind of glitchy uh, feel to your game. And that's because the movement of the camera depends on the on the player's position. So you gotta make sure you move this one first. This is why we, we do um, a late update every time we're playing with the camera. Alright, so let's do if player transform dot length is equal equal to zero, that means we haven't uh, found any player, which is gonna hit a return here. Or if it confuses you, you can say, well, you can just put something in here, so debug.log have not found a player make sure the player tag is on or something of the sort it's basically just a um, setup error now we've did our our security check we can do um, we're gonna assign every single frame we're gonna assign a value to x min x max y min and x uh, I mean y max so we'll do x min is equal to x max which is equal to player transform add index 0 dot position dot position dot x and that's all we need actually since I want to I want this to be reset every frame uh, I'm just going to assign it to the first object in the array now same thing for y min and y max but instead of being position x we do position y now we have to find which is the smallest x and which is the biggest x and same thing for the y so if int i is equal to 1 and we're going to say is equal to 1 because we already try uh, with the position 0 so if int y is equal to 1 let's not do if <laughs> my bad let's do a for loop so for int i is equal to 1 as long as i is smaller than player transform that length i plus plus and inside of here this is where we do the check so if player transform add the index i dot position dot x is smaller than x min then we're going to do x min is equal to player transform add the index i dot position dot x and that's pretty much all we're going to be doing for other times. So, like that. Formatting is starting to piss me off a little bit, but don't, don't worry too much about that. So the second one is is bigger than x max. If that's the case, then x max is uh, equal to this. That's fine. Now we're going to do y. So if player transform at the index i that position dot y is smaller than a, then y min then y min is equal to this at the position y. Um, have I made any mistakes? I don't see any mistakes thus far. Oh here, this has to be the max and position y. Okay, so everything should be fine at this time, and we now have the. Um, the small x, x, well, we pretty much just have the camera bound, so where exactly should we be positioning is in the center of them all. Now, having this done, we can go at the very end of our update, of our late update, and we could say, let's start with a float. So float x middle is equal to, now we need the middle point in between these two, so we're going to do x min plus x max divided by 2. Make sure you put those in parentheses for um, operation priorities, so this is run properly, basically. And then the y middle, which is basically the same thing, so y min plus y max divided by 2. So now we've got our x, we've got our y, all we're needing is the z. So we'll do float distance, 
and we'll do float distance is equal to x max minus x min that's going to give us a distance in between the two and we'll do just below that if distance is smaller than minimum distance then let's just make sure we uh, clamp it back so distance is equal to minimum distance We've got our x, y, and z. We're pretty much ready to just move our camera now. So transform.position is equal to a new vector 3. x middle. y middle. And minus distance. This one is important. Don't forget the minus in front of it. Because you're going in the, uh, in the other direction. Well, I guess it really depends on your scene. But in my case, I want my camera to be in a negative x, as you can tell here. Alright, let's play this. Hopefully nothing crashes, everything is great, good times. And this is the kind of result we get, so do we want to increase the Y offset? Um, yeah, I actually don't use that, so let me go back in my code really quickly. Y middle plus Y offset. There we go. Makes more sense now. And this is the kind of result we get. Now if I was to move... Let's actually try and move something. Going to move this player now, the, the, the player 2, move it here. And as you can tell, it does scale up a little bit. And as soon as we enter a 7.5 with the camera in terms of Z, it is going to be on the minimum distance. And now this makes more sense. So, good times. Okay, so this guy goes over here. Now this guy jumps. He does like double jumps and stuff. It doesn't actually do anything. Okay, so we have an error somewhere in the code. Uh, let's check out this place. Oh, over here. It's bigger than the YMAX, so again, a typo on my part. That's what I get for doing some copy-paste. Alright, let's try this again. Let's move the player number 3 and move it up a little bit. And as you can tell, it does follow. Now, this one can go on the right side during that time, and we're going to be able to just grasp everything. And alright guys, so that is going to be pretty much it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy, and um, I hope you guys learned something. If you did, please give me a like. Really appreciate that as always. If you have any requests, you can use the Facebook page below and just send me requests via the, uh, the private messages. Again, I'd like to thank Snick for suggesting this, and um, yeah. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys next time.